Hey Spartan fans, this is Eddie Ushel, the Associate AD and Head Baseball Coach here at Missouri Baptist, and you are on Cruising with the Coaches. Hey Spartan Faithful, I'm graduate assistant with athletics Joel Devick and I'm here with, as you heard, Eddie Ushel. This is our pilot episode of Cruising with the Coaches. We're excited. Uh, Eddie, we brought you into what I'm affectionately calling uh, Spartacus' chariot. So uh, we're going to get her started, take you around campus, and ask a few questions. How does that sound? Should be a lot of fun. All Looking right. forward to it, Joel. Let's rock and roll. Figure out where drive is. Drive is. Yeah, here we go. You got it. All right, Eddie, as we start out our journey, we're going to go around uh, Spartan Village. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you about how you got started here at Missouri Baptist, how you ended up here and everything. Uh, I mean, that's a long time ago. You know, 22 years ago, I was actually a uh, head baseball coach, and I was uh, an assistant football coach at Olivet College mm -hmm. in Olivet, Michigan. And uh, I never applied for the job. Yeah, basically, a friend of a friend knew me, and they tried to hire him, and he said, <laughs> he said, you can't afford me, but I know the right guy for the job. <laughs> and my understanding was they had over 100 applicants for the position at the time, and they didn't really find the guy. They wanted to find the right combination. Of a, they found a lot of guys with strong baseball, but their faith was lacking, and they had guys with strong faith, but the baseball was lacking. So I was told that when I came in and they interviewed me that, I was the guy. I never applied. So I had to fill out the application after I interviewed. Interesting. So that's how it happened. And I moved down here. And I was uh, engaged at the time and uh, spent my first year down here. My fiance and wife of 20 years. And then we got married after my first year. Excellent. Tell me about your playing days. And, uh, you know, obviously baseball is a large part of your life. How did you start out? Because obviously everyone, you know, they start out playing. Well, funny thing is, things are so different nowadays. When I was a kid, I started off playing slow pitch softball, and then I started playing fast pitch in fifth grade, and had a nice, I was a good player, and had a nice high school career. I was an all-conference kid in high school, and then college, I didn't play as much, and uh, part of it was uh, just how I carried myself. I had, uh, there's things I had to grow up with, but I played for a guy named, uh, Bob Fisher at Baldwin Walls College. He was there for 40 years, a great guy, a great man, and we're, we're good friends now. But I was just a, a DH first baseman who caught bullpens and uh, it was a good program and nothing spectacular about my career. But then I was really fortunate, uh, started graduate school at Kent State University and Danny Hall, uh, who's got 1,300 wins now at Georgia Tech. And, he uh, agreed to take me on as a volunteer graduate assistant and uh, just has really helped me out with my career and is still a dear, dear friend to me. So he's, uh, nice. uh, he got me going and I was really fortunate. Went from Kent State to uh, Tyler Junior College in Tyler, Texas. And I coached with him for five years down there. So I bounced around for a little bit. I was in Tyler and then the next year I was in, uh, uh, in Indiana coaching at Manchester College, that's where I met my wife, and the next year I was a head coach up at Olivet College, and then the next year I was at Missouri Baptist. So um, I think it was four years in a row, I started off the school year living at a different place than I did the year before. So you've seen a lot, huh? Seen a lot. I've done football, I've done uh, the Division One. I've done, I've done every level of college baseball except for Division Two. I've coached professionally while I was in Tyler and I've coached internationally with Athletes in Action. Spent a summer in Central America, in uh, Nicaragua and Costa Rica, coaching uh, an Athletes in Action team, which is a mentioned uh, sports branch of Campus Crusade for Christ. Yeah. So, you know, we've had a lot of guys play professional baseball along the way, and we've had a lot of guys who couldn't break a window if they threw a baseball at it, they wouldn't throw it. So I've seen just about every level, man. I had a. I was fortunate to be part of a staff that coached a kid who was uh, the third player taken in the draft. And then I've, you know, I've had guys that didn't have anywhere now that, that type of talent. So yeah. I've kind of seen the whole gamut of it. Gotcha. Well, we're going to take a little uh, break here. We pull up to 
beautiful Spartan baseball field. It is a um, nice field. Yeah, tell me about how you've seen things change here in your time. You said you've been here 22 years. That's a good question. That's a good question because to be honest with you, man, I look back and I don't. The only reason I took this job, the only way, is because this is what the Lord wanted for me. Because the interview process was not that refined. This field was like a goat pasture, and I'm not mm -hmm. kidding when I say that. And I know the year before, they when I got here, they were canceling games and moving them over to Baldwin Athletic Complex to play because the field was not really very playable. Right. And so within a couple of years, we got it going, and that's kind of one of my backgrounds. I learned how to do this stuff when I was in Tyler, Texas, working with the um, Tyler Wildcatters as head of state of operations, and I learned how to ride grass. Uh, we got out there right now. We have our Bermuda out there and all the different stuff. You see a couple of my GAs are out there. Well, one of my GAs, one of my players is out there working on the field, getting it ready for this afternoon. And, and it's just, it's something I love to do. It's the kind of thing that stinks is when you become a head coach and the program gets as big as it is now with so many guys. It's, I love doing that stuff and I don't get to do it as much during the season. I get to do it during the summer a little bit more, but I don't get to do it that much during the season. Like this, like stuff he's doing right now, he's just out there you know, working the dirt and watering the dirt. And that's, right. that's, that's relaxing. Like I know Coach Grazer, one of the high points of his day is he gets on the, yeah. you know, he cuts the grass. That's really relaxing. It takes you about 50 minutes to an hour, and it's just really relaxing. So, but we've got the field in nice shape. There's things we want to get done uh, beyond the field, but it's a labor of love, and, and it's it's really people don't understand how much time it takes to make a field to get a field to look and play like this field is right now. Right. All right, Eddie. Well, we've taken a look at uh, your facilities and your fields, and now we're gonna. Head on back and see a little bit more of campus. All right. Sound good? Sounds good. It's a little easier to talk when it's not as loud. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, wanted to get into, you know, baseball's a little bit of a superstitious sport, at least for some. Um, do you have any type of uh, free game ritual or something you got to do every time? Or is no. it kind of just uh, something that you treat every game, you know? Yeah, I, I treat it. It's, that's a really good question, too, man. And, I think there's difference between superstitions and habits. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I think habits are a good thing. Uh, I think superstitions, you got to be careful with that stuff. If you're saying because you did this, this, and this, you know, I think habits are, are. I think you need to look at things as habits. Like, you know, you might go get breakfast this place, and you might, you know, this is what you do an hour before the game, and this is when, you know, when I fill my lineups out. And it's just because I'm big on consistency, and I think habits are consistent. You know, I, and, but it's never. With the way we're set up, sometimes I feel like sometimes I fill out the lineup in the field. Sometimes I fill it up in the office. Sometimes you know you're eating at this time. It's just with how we're set up, it's hard to really be caught into that because we don't have a locker room, we don't have an office up in the field, we don't have things up there where we can do that type of stuff. But there's nothing that I uh, nah. I mean, I just like to pray before the game, and that's about it. And that's not superstition, right. and that's not praying about winning or losing. It's just praying that I carry myself in a certain way and that just the how guys you go about your daily life. How, right? And how about how the guys do it, you know, and I want All I right. want to win baseball games but I also want us to be to understand who we are. Uh, as you see at the end of our dugout, there's one thing that says remember who you play for. It's capital W H O. And we talk about that just about every day. So um, that's that's my I know guys have superstitions and I, I like to call them habits. Yeah. stuff that guys like to do but you do get to that point of the season if you're doing certain things and they're working you just keep doing them one yeah. thing that happens i what well, you call it superstitious or not but if you get going and you happen to keep wearing the same uniform that uniform gets worn an awful lot <laughs> so last year was one year the first year we went to the super regionals we wore our navy top our white hat our navy top and our white pinstripe pants just about every day right and the guys are just like hey that's our, that's our uniform, and we got to go broke, with it. Don't fix it, right? And we always wear on Fridays at home. We always wear our, our pinstripes. We've done that for well, 17 years now. Gotcha. Friday home games wear white pinstripes. Yeah. Last year, a guy tried to change it a little bit. We're like, nah. Matt has Big Matt. You'll you get to know Big Matt. Awesome guy. He wanted to change it a little bit, but we're gonna wear our pinstripes on Friday. That's what we do. So I guess that could be a, a habit. It's just a tradition. Is what it yeah. Is. Uh, we got to see Chapel there. We just passed by, and you, meant, you mentioned to me off camera that that wasn't even here no. when you started. Um, and you've mentioned your faith a little bit. Uh, how, 
do you try and approach like you know the faith aspect when you're coaching? And what do you want your guys to take away from Missouri Baptist more than just baseball and their playing time? I just want them to know, first of all, that God loves them. Uh, but you know, it, you know, you got so many people within the uh, realm of Christianity. You know, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian. We're you know, Episcopalian, and then you're, you know, oh, you're Assembly of God. Man, I want my guys to know that Jesus is who he said he was, and he's real, and he wants to know you, and you need to pursue that relationship. I don't know if you do it within the Baptist realm, or if you do it within the Presbyterian realm, or just you need to know Jesus and the reasons why you need to know Jesus. So our, you know, our, uh, that's the prime purpose for our program is that we bring guys in, we'll bring guys in that know the Lord, and if they do, our hope is that they grow in their faith. My hope is for them to make good decisions, and then they got to do what they do with that. I can't, I can't live their life as a baseball player. That's probably where I have the most impact, but I can't live their life academically. I, I can, I can we set up study hall, we keep them accountable, I, and I can't even live their life off campus. I can't go, I'm not going to go search their apartment, see who they have spending the night, or what kind of music they're listening to. Yeah. But we try to give them the tools to make good decisions. And the first decision is, you know, you need to know the Lord. If they don't, we still love them, and they're, they're welcome here. We want them here. And I don't feel any differently about them, but my hope is that they know the Lord. That's what our program is for. Awesome. Real quick, as we, uh, you know, we pulled up to the finish here, are you excited for this coming season? I am. I like this group of guys. You know, I, I, I really do. I feel we're as talented as we've been. We've had some good years. We haven't gotten into the tournament. We didn't get into the tournament last year. But we've had some good years. We won with 30 and 17 last year, which most people would consider a good year. For us, that's not really a good year. Mm. And uh, you know, we didn't win the conference. So I like our team. Uh, we got a good mixture of guys coming back. We got a good mixture of uh, talented guys coming in. And I think we have a deeper staff. And I think we're going to have more bullpen depth this year as we go into the season. And that's really going to be the difference. We're going to have really good starting pitching. We can have guys that come in at the end of the game and get us out when we need to get out. Good deal. Eddie, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Joel, for joining appreciate me. it, man. Thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Spartan Nation. This has been Cruising with the Coaches. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and this has been Associate AD and Head Baseball Coach Eddie Eschel. We'll see you next time.